Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and this is my continuing build for emodels.co.uk, uh, the Edward uh, MiG-21, uh, or two, two MiG-21s. Uh, this is a dual combo pack in 144 scale. Uh, so basically it comes with uh, enough to build two of the same plane. Uh, it gives you, on the box, if you didn't catch my previous episode, uh, decals and uh, paint schemes for several variations of it. Uh, now, the ones I've built so far, on the, the prior episode, I've built the two planes. Uh, I haven't put the landing gear and the little spiky bits on yet, because danger of them falling off and things like that, and convenience of painting. Uh, so, what I'm going to do now, uh, I've decided to do, um, basically, the ones on the front of the box. Uh, one in chrome, and one in camo. Uh, the bottom of the camo one, according to the instructions here, is going to be sort of chromed anyway. So, what I need to do is make uh, all of this one silvery, and the bottom of that one silvery. Uh, now, I'm doing that using C1 metalizer powder. Uh, now, I've only used this as a, a test before. I've not actually done any, any kits with it. So, bear with me as we uh, explore and learn together the joy joys of C1 metalizing powder. Uh, now the kits come uh, obviously with a pot of the powder, a selection of um, polishing pads and little uh, applicators and sticks and things. Uh, one applicator I did start using so I'm going to continue using that one. Uh, and obviously an instruction sheet and a face mask. Uh, because this powder is very 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 fine. Uh, it's so fine that it goes everywhere. If you breathe too hard near it, near it, you'll empty the pot all over the place. And yeah, it won't be fun. Uh, so, unfortunately, I have some white paper that I shall be putting down on top of my work area as well. Because uh, there's a good chance that it's going to go everywhere. Um, the white balance is probably going to go mental anyway, but there we go. Uh, so, I'm going to... Uh, Pause the video for a sec while I get myself sorted out. I'll put the mask on and uh, we'll get this open and we'll say cover one plane entirely and cover the bottom of another one. Uh, the little only addition to last time, um, I've put a little blob of blue tack over the canopy because the masking that I painted over has got a little hole in the top. So I've put that over just so we don't get that everywhere. Uh, I'm not worrying, I'm going to be adding the C1 everywhere on this particular plane. The front bit needs to be a different colour. That needs to be done in green, as does little bits on the top here. Uh, I did consider doing them prior to this, but the paint I'm going to be using for it is the one that I haven't got out because I wasn't planning on doing this bit. Uh, the Vallejo Mecha colour, which is a very thick pigment and goes over anything without any problem at all. So it's going to be easy to paint that by hand, just brushing on over that rather than trying to mask off afterwards. Although it does come, the kit that does come with uh, masking um, stickers, like for the canopy, that will go over these bits. But I'm going to do it the other way around. So I'm going to get this uh, set up and ready to go, and show you when it goes on. Okay, I might be a bit muffled now because obviously I've got this face mask thing on so I don't blow this everywhere. Just in taking the lid off, you can see it's obviously started to go everywhere already. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, what you need to do is get a blob of it on and uh, sort of just slap it on. Now, this is the one that I'm just doing the underside of. So, I'm just covering the underside. Uh, where it goes up, obviously the sides I'm not going to be too worried about. I will be uh, not so much masking this, but I'll be, when I paint it I'm going to just do it from above. So I don't need to worry about masking the underside. Now, this is the joy of using a black primer and then putting this on it. Apart from the fact that it, it makes the, the chrome really look nice. It really brings out the panel details. So this is it's quite lovely. Uh, I should probably be wearing gloves when I do this. I will when I do the other one. When I'm doing all of it, I will put some gloves on. Just 
so I'm not absolutely getting it everywhere. Uh, now I will need to add this, of course, to the um, bits that I'm missing, the uh, wheel covers and things like that. But uh, doing it on a small scale is obviously not going to be a problem, I hope. So that's pretty much got the coverage over those bits. I'm just going to go over it again and sort of try and push it in a bit. Not so much polishing with this bit, this is just for applying it. But just making sure it actually goes everywhere that I want it to go. So, um, I'm going to finish getting this in there and then I'll come back and show you some polishing. So, that's got all of that covered and the bottom of that one done as well. Uh, so what we need to do now is give it a polish. So we're going to get the little polishing pads and basically, as if you're polishing anything, just give it a polish. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on. Spend a little bit of time going over trying to make sure you get into the, the grooves, obviously folding up, folding up the pads to get into where you need to get to. And that should give us quite a shiny, you can see the, the shine already appearing on the raised bits. That give us quite a nice effect. Uh, probably too shiny for a real, you know, in use plane, but I'm going for a display model rather than a duplicate of a you know real real world environment. So I'm very happy with how that's coming out. Uh, now you may have noticed that I didn't do as I was going to do and paint a few panels in different colours. I did try it, and to be honest, it made so little difference that it wasn't going to be noticeable that anything had been done. So I basically didn't bother. Uh, I may, when I'm doing weathering and things on that, again it's not going to be heavy weathering on this, at uh, this scale anyway, but I'm, I'll be doing some more sort of bringing out some different panels by selective weathering and things. Now that's actually, say, looking metallic isn't it? Which is what we're aiming for. Um, I can take the blue pad tack off now actually because I'm not going to be polishing uh, you know, putting any more metallizing powder on this one, but uh, yeah, I'll continue polishing. You don't need to watch me do that, uh, and we'll see when when that bit's done, ready for the next stage. So it's all polished up. Uh, the other one's just polished up in the uh, undercarriage department, not the the top. Still a bit fingerprints and stuff but I'm going to be painting over that with the camo colours so not concerned about that at the moment uh, th this one is obviously pretty much finished good to go uh, I've got the uh, undercarriage and little spiky bits uh, cut off ready to go I need to prime those and paint them uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of assembly of them first because obviously they're very small so they're hard to actually individually paint uh, let me find the correct part of the instructions that details where we've got to. Uh, basically, the side, back, the rear wheels are made up of three pieces. There's a rod, a uh, axle piston bit, and the wheel itself, uh, of which there's two of each in there. Let me see what we can find. Uh, obviously, that's the front wheel. Uh, that's the long I don't know is it an aerial or something uh, there's a couple of little bits in there uh, that's the two uh, sort of axle bits that the wheels fit onto and then you've got the two sort of support brackets that go around them somewhere and obviously other little spiky bits as well as the covers for the two rear and the two front uh, might be the other way around oh no they're actually all for the rear the front one I haven't prepared yet uh, 
Oh, they're the front ones. That's that. I'm, I'm, I'm talking across things. It's because they're so small. I thought they were supports. They're the front covers for the, the front wheel that obviously are going to be open next to it. So there we go. That's that's the support bit, as is that. And we've got that. And there's another one. There it is, down there. So that's the support. That's the aerial. They look very similar because they're obviously just small. Uh, and there's an inside cover and an outside cover for each. So I'll get those assembled off camera because it's too small to do it on camera. I'm going to build these bits up and then my, uh, prime them and then paint them. Uh, probably paint them assembled onto the onto the model because it's not going to be easy to do it any other way. Uh, these one the covers need to be uh, done in C1, especially the, it's the outsides of them need to be done in C1. Uh, as do the aerial bits which is going to be fun uh, basically I'm just going to almost dip them into the C1 and then carefully polish them outside and then put them on and I'll need to touch up with obviously the glue goes around that uh, the other one's not so bad because obviously being uh, done in camo I'll be painting over it after they're assembled but the C1 I can't do so much while it's in such bits because you've got to hold something to be able to do it so I'll see how it goes with that um, so being all small fine stuff I can't really film it to show you but uh, I'll show you what I can when I can okay I've got the undercarriage all fitted and the, the spiky bits uh, I've just re uh, primed them again because when I glued them on obviously it didn't uh, take as well as it should so I haven't put on the let me show you the little bits the only bits that I've not put on yet are two of those, one on each side. Uh, they actually go on the outside of the uh, wheel axle post thing. Uh, but obviously if I put that on, then painting is gonna be really difficult. So I shall put those on after. Uh, once this has dried, I'll see about trying to get the, the C1 in and the paint in on those. And then obviously put those on C1 those again and then uh, that one will be pretty much finished uh, the other one I do still need to do the paint camo on it uh, and of course the other thing I need to do is some weapons uh, bombs and what whatnot uh, which are fitted on underneath as well so uh, yeah I'm gonna get that paint, uh, painted the undercarriage painted and uh, I'll come back to you when I'm ready to do either the guns or the top camo depending on which one I decide to do first so all well, that's dried and in there fine uh, what I need to do now is do some painting um, I'm going to paint the insides of these uh, hatches in light grey so I've got some light grey here uh, so I'm just gonna carefully say paint the insides of these uh, actually gonna go with a slightly bigger brush to actually get it done today there we go now this will obviously be weathered as well so I'll use the finer brush to go in around the edges as well uh, let's do the insides of these ones also uh, then I'm going to be doing some aluminium on the bits of the wheel and some uh, rubber black on the actual tire of the wheel and then it'll be time to get the C1 back out again and do the outside of the the covers and indeed the thing uh, the, whatever the pokey bit is as ever I don't know what these things are um, so there's that and uh, then the green on the front is the the nose cone and the first little bit of fuselage there is green and then uh, ah, there's one other bit the other bit I've got to put on there is the other um, cover but I need to paint the uh, landing gear first so I'm doing that now and I'll come back when I've got some more put together So there we have it, uh, the green painted up, also on the top and bottom 
there uh, on both kits not a problem with that uh, I do obviously need to still paint the top of this one so I'll be masking that off uh, when I come to do the, the painting on the top it does come with a masking piece for that so that's convenient um, right next up now I've painted the the wheels and wheel uh, areas shall we say uh, I do need to do the C1 on the outsides of those but I also need to do it on those uh, these are the let's grab a little pair of tweezers so I can actually show you um, these are the other bit of the wheel cover uh, which goes that way around this is that one let's turn it around so we get it the right way around uh, it goes on there like that basically fixed to the the strut um, so I painted the inside of that gray and obviously I painted that now so we need to get some paint uh, some glue rather onto the bottom half of that and get that in the right place the top of it is bent out slightly so it's strange sort of shaping to that uh, let me just double check the instructions to see that I'm getting it the right way around yep that's the right way around the right bit on the right in the right place so there's that which also needs the C1 which is why I wanted to get that attached now rather than later so I'll get the other three of those done one more on there two on the other uh, then touch up with the C1 and see how it looks afterwards and there you have it that's pretty much done uh, it's come out nice and shiny it's got shiny bits on the uh, undercarriage bay doors and all painted up with rubber black and aluminium on the other bits uh, it needs weathering and it needs some weapons I've still got the weapons to do that's the one outstanding bit to do on there really but other than that I'm quite happy with it it's coming out quite nice and shiny so yep all good so far uh, the other one much the same underneath all, all done uh, also the green on the front done uh, now this one obviously needs some more paint doing so that's why I've left the masking on the canopy on that one uh, this one needs the camo on the top which is going to be so brown um, a couple of greens using the mecha color ones which will go over the fingerprints and masking on that I'll wipe them down a bit but uh, that's going to come out however it comes out and we'll see what it looks like I'll mask off the the nose cone area and basically spray from the top not spraying underneath so I won't, won't mask any of the bottom bit but um, we'll see how it comes out if need be we can go back and you know touch up the, the C1 but I think that'll be okay um, I'll mask off the bit there as well which comes in the kit the little masking paint panels for that I don't think there's anything for the nose cone but I'll check and uh, yeah once I I'll be showing you how I do the the camo on there but uh, the first is to get the the lighter color down which on this is going to be the um, olive green so I'm going to be doing all of the top in olive green then masking off a bit of it and doing the other green and then masking off even more of it and doing the brown but I'll show you that in a moment so that's the first green down um, as I say I just sprayed from the top and carefully at the top on the side so the underside without any masking is still looking good and you get a nice sort of fade on the join uh, now what I'm going to do is mask up uh, about a third of it uh, so what I'm going to be doing is basically covering over the bits that I want to stay in that color uh, so I can then spray the next green over the top and it will go over this and not over <coughs> excuse me where I want it to stay uh, so I'm just using blue tack on this because it's easier than trying to mask around shapes and and things and it gives quite a nice feathered sort of edge uh, so I'm gonna cover as I say about a third in various uh, I say edges and not edges and everything else uh, and then I'll spray the other green on and then I'll cover half of what's left in masking as well to cover that over and leave this masking in place so we can carry on and and do the third color the brown uh, I'll show you an intermediate stage when that's done so that's the darker green put over the top uh, I'll just take off one of these 
so you can see that's the the light green and then the darker green so I need to actually I'll take that one off completely and then reapply it slightly bigger uh, basically half of what's left needs to be um, covered over again so we can get the brown down so I'll uh, as I say spread that out a little bit more get that so it covers where it was and a bit more work in some strange patterns and shapes and things and see when it's painted and that's the brown down as well uh, I'm gonna remove the masking live on camera so we can see uh, how it's all looking and how it finished up uh, as ever I'm gonna need some touch up bits on a couple of bits here and there some overspray onto the uh, front wheel there but the rest of the underside looks fine I've got no problems with with all of that but uh, I'd say a little bit of touch up here and there but uh, all in all it's come out quite well now I'm just going to peel off a, a few bits of this now um, but you can see hopefully uh, the, the different shades of green underneath there with the brown that's come out quite well uh, so I'm going to get the rest of this peeled off and then I say a little bit of touch up to do on the underside uh, and then we'll be ready for decals with all the masking off I'm happy with how that's come out that's good I like it it's not a, an exact copy of any particular camo scheme but it does the job it looks like a camo uh, the bottom underside of this one is obviously still the shiny, shiny uh, finish to it so I'm happy with that I'll put that to one side <clears throat> and I'm going to be starting with some decals uh, now I've tested on a couple of uh, polished spoons to see how they work and Microset and Microsoft do work and if you're careful I think you get away with it straight over the C1 so if you don't know about uh, putting decals onto a kit let me let me show you uh, basically you get a sheet of decals with kits obviously these are the ones I've used for the the interior the canopy the cockpit um, on the instructions it tells you uh, obviously you pick the scheme that you're going to be doing so this is obviously for different versions I've decided to go for this one just because you know uh, in the the shiny finish you've obviously got the two variations um, but I like the look of that one so I'm gonna go with that one uh, I've decided not to put any uh, uh, bombs or weapons underneath purely because I, I didn't like the, the the lines look nice and clean as they are so I'm happy leaving it like that um, they're gonna be mounted onto a, a base anyway so you're not really gonna be able to see underneath them and I just like the look of it uh, so I'm gonna be doing this one so I need uh, decal number nine and number six for the side and obviously the same the other side but I'm just going to start with with one just to show you what's what nine is obviously the number 22 uh, so I'm just going to cut down with a, a sharp knife just cutting out that decal just like that and there we have just that decal move the other ones out of the way uh, now I've got a, a bowl of water just plain warmish water uh, just going to soak that in there keeping hold of the paper for a few seconds get it out and that's pretty much it um, in anything from a few seconds to let's say 30 seconds or a minute um, the water basically lo loosens the the decal on the top of the paper and allows you to move it around and, and indeed peel it off and put it where you need it to get to be uh, now looking at this I'm going to go this side because that's easiest it's the same decal obviously it's just shown down on that side uh, looking at where it needs to go it needs to cover that panel a little bit and sort of go to the left of that uh, so I'm um, just gonna try moving that yeah there you go that's moving around on there so that's exactly what I need it to do it's tricky holding and moving and doing it so you can see it on camera so I'm just going to carefully try and hold that in the right place 
get that to whereabouts it needs to be. And then I notice I'm using the edge of the, the tweezers rather than the pointy bit. I'm sliding that down and off into the right place. Get rid of the paper, you don't need that anymore. And then you can just maneuver it to where you want it to be. Now I don't want it to be floating around in there, so I'm just going to use a Q-tip, a cotton bud, and just sort of roll it over to take away most of the water that was on it. And that I'm actually happy with. That's in about the right place. Just a little bit of tweaking. So I'm going to leave that there until that dries and sets and then I can use some uh, microsol which will just bed it down a bit and remove some of the, the backing from it. Uh, like the bit in obviously that isn't the colour. So that should be okay. Um, I'm going to be careful with it. Normally you just sort of slap it over and it goes everywhere. But uh, I'm going to be a bit more careful with it and try and get it only where I need it to be. So I'm going to use a, a finer brush and just brush it on carefully. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Obviously that's um, actually putting it down just a little bit. There we go. Uh, <coughs> a few decals to do. I've got the, the stars and obviously the little shield thing on there as well. So I'll get all of those done on both of them. And then we'll be ready to start some sort of gentle weathering. So, I'll see you when that's ready. Right, I've done some weathering on this using the uh, Vallejo Mecca Colour weathering things that I've got that fit. Uh, oil stains, uh, petrol spills and fuel stains. Uh, I did film it, but the file didn't save. It didn't come out properly. So you can't actually see me doing it, but I can show you what it looks like after I've done it. Uh, basically, I've added some to the, the flap areas uh, sort of where it would wear and where the moving parts are really and a bit all over sort of some of the, the panel lining and things like that in there and mainly into the the sort of exposed undercarriage areas where obviously it would build up um, and again lightly over the top pretty much over <coughs> say the flap areas not forgetting the ones on the back and the ones on the tail and concentrating around the um, engine area. Now the one other thing I'm going to do is using the, again make a colour, uh, the black wash which is just a black wash basically. Uh, I'm going to be adding more of that inside the actual engine itself just to darken that down perhaps a little bit around the edge but I'm then going to be using a, a cotton bud, a q-tip to sort of remove most of that Anyway, because that's what a wash does. It sort of uh, adds it and then removes mo much of it anyway. Just to add that little extra darkening to certain areas. Uh, so, that's that done with the two. Um, and then we're on to the sort of diorama effect, really. My idea for the display base is basically going to be a black uh, foam board card nice and easy cheap lightweight uh, and the planes themselves I'm just going to be having on them on it basically like that but uh, I'm going to make it into a, a sort of runway I'm going to be spraying it grey and then putting a, a dotted line down it uh, just having the, the planes not so randomly but just arranged so they they've got something for them to sit on to uh, so I'm going to spray it grey and then come back and show you some masking and getting the white line on it And that's the black painted grey. Uh, I deliberately didn't do it solid. I've left sort of patchy. It, as it's dried, it's gone less patchy. But it's still not a solid, solid grey. Uh, so all I'm going to do now is add some masking uh, so I can put on some white lines. Now, what, the easiest way of doing that is to use one long piece. I don't want to go dead straight across. So I'm just going to go across there. And just put that down there. And then do another piece, leaving a gap. And the gap is going to be where my white line is going to be. So I'm just eyeballing it to get it 
parallel maybe about there so that's that uh, now obviously I don't want a solid line I need a dotted line so I'm gonna put gap across there uh, another one about there and let's see if that takes us one more actually that's much too long we go for the same sort of gap about there and that one uh, let's continue that all the way across the end actually uh, so I'm going to have three lines uh, that should be enough coverage I'm going to spray it in so I'll probably add a little bit of masking on the other side just to make sure that I've got it wide enough uh, and I'm going to then add some um, mask oil which I've got in a drawer somewhere I'll dig it out and show you applying that right now mask oil is a horrible uh, gloopy material that masks funny enough that's why they call it mask oil uh, so what I'm going to do is add some uh, sort of along the edges and throughout the um, the white bit and when I'm just trying not to do it everywhere I'm just, random is difficult to do uh, it's it's easy to paint something sort of complete and solid but when you're trying to do a random dots it doesn't ever come out random if you think too hard about it so I'm trying to do it while I'm talking so I can easily just get it going everywhere um, so this is gonna create gaps in the paint so when this comes off it will hopefully look like the paints just worn in those areas so it's not a big solid white line it obviously used to be a white line but it's worn away as people have been landing planes on it walking across it whatever else and hopefully in a believable sort of uh, finish uh, so uh, when obviously say it's purple when it's wet it dries sort of clear and uh, then I'll be able to paint over the top of it and when we peel it off we'll see if it's worked so I'll see you momentarily when this is dry and I've just sprayed some white paint over the top of it so that's painted it's not dry yet but I've done that deliberately I don't want to peel it off when it's dry I'd like a little bit more uh, chance of it spreading a little bit because when they put it down they put it down wet uh, so I'm going to peel off the tape which I just realized I put on quite well and he's actually down underneath and everything uh, so I'm just going to peel it off sort of rough and ready and that's going to peel off some of the mask oil but not all of it I do need to go back over and get rid of some of the bits from the middle but that is pretty much the effect that I was hoping for so um, yeah I'm going to get the rest of this off probably mess up the edges a little bit because they're a little bit too rounded it shouldn't be quite that uh, you know, round blobs and things so I'll get that tidied up and then we'll be ready to do a little bit a little bit more weathering on there so that's that's that uh, I'm gonna go over with again the three sort of aircrafty type uh, I'm gonna start with the grey one which is the petrol spills think yeah a sort of grey colour I'm actually just gonna put a few dots around as planes you know come in and drop things around and mess it about and you know it goes everywhere and then using a huge brush I'm just gonna sort of spread them mess them weather them in and just sort of use it to discolour the, the surface so there'll be a few streaks a few dots a few bits here and there 
generally. It's just so it doesn't look like a plain board anymore. Uh, going to do the same with the others, and then that should be about done. So that's uh, looking a little bit less straight, less flat, less boring. Uh, so the planes are going to sit on it. Let's say something like that, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, PVA just to get them held in place. So I'll get them glued down, and that will be the end. So I'll uh, get it all finished off. A little bit of touching up here and there, and then I'll show you it finished. So that's the completed build. Uh, being a strange shape, I didn't want to put it on the turntable, so I thought I'd just show you it by hand, as it were. Uh, it's been a fun, inbuilt, enjoyable build. It's taken a little bit longer than I would have expected it to, but uh, all in all, I'm happy with how it's turned out. The uh, planes obviously stuck to the board now, so they don't fall off when I move it around. Um, I think that would go quite well in the display cabinet and e models. Uh, one shiny, one camo, uh, both the same kit, both come in the same kit. Uh, but uh, yeah, they've come out quite nicely. You can see the shine certainly on there. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the build, and I hope you you know pick up something similar and build along. Uh, I'll see you soon for the next uh, next build. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.